Hey everyone, and welcome to this video on Mars, Uranus, North Node Conjunct. This is a transit that's happening on August 1st, 2022. I am Cassandra, welcome to my channel, Saffron Sage Astrology, and today we're talking all about the meaning of this major transit in the sky. This is one of the top transits, I would say, of 2022 in terms of its impact, and we're gonna talk about why. So in this video, we're talking about the meaning of this transit on the emotional level. We're gonna talk about what it means in the world, a little bit about the historical background of other times where we've seen this aspect play out and the historical themes that were happening. And then we will do a breakdown for each rising sign. So buckle up, get ready, and let's go. All right, so on the emotional level, let's just start by talking about the meaning of Uranus and Mars because um, just these two are pretty significant. And having the North Node there, the way that I interpret this is um, it makes it bigger. So it makes the conjunction between Mars and Uranus bigger. Mars and Uranus is no joke in terms of what kind of things we can see. And part of the reason is because Uranus, Father Sky, you know, the planet of revolution, freedom, detachment, the planet of evolution, progress, humanitarian issues, electricity, sudden changes, and technology is meeting up with Mars, which is the planet of war, the planet of aggression, you know, the planet of force. Uh, it also rules things like heat and sharp objects, um, things that are antagonizing and stimulating. So Uranus and Mars are both stimulating planets. So when you get them together, this is an aspect that, that like you can't miss it is what I would say about that this one. So let's talk about the potential combinations for us emotionally. So on the emotional level, this will inspire a desire for freedom. <clears throat> Excuse me, a desire for freedom for sudden change. This will cause us to feel like we cannot no, we can no longer bear things in our life that have been intoler intolerable. You know, it's like, this is where you hit a breaking point and you just go enough is enough. I can't do this anymore. Now, what this is really depends on you, what's happening in your life, your natal chart, all these other things. So the kind of things that we're going to want to break free from are going to depend on, you know, each person, but it wouldn't be surprising if it involved the themes of Taurus, such as land or food or our possessions, where it's like um, this desire for more financial stability in cases where there is instability. Um, things like that. So it's like we can revolt in our own little emotional way against things that just don't allow us to have enough money or the physical things that we want or to enjoy the senses, right? So, so for one person, it's like, okay, you want greater land attached to your, you know, house, you know, for someone else, maybe you want a bigger bedroom for someone else. Uh, maybe you want more money, more, better skills, or just to feel like you can count on the skills that you have bringing you something. So I would not be surprised if in the world we see some kind of revolution, some kind of movement starting at this time that deals with things that involve our own, our own food, our own possessions, um, land. There could be disputes over land, like landowners' rights. Homeowners' rights could be an issue. This could be like something that gets going in the, on TikTok or something where people start calling out the system, you know, the way the system is set up in terms of, you know, the rights that homeowners have, things like this. Worst case scenario, people lose their rights to their land in some way, shape, or form. Now, um, another thing about this on the emotional side, this can make us feel impatient. Mars Uranus is impatient. It wants what it wants and it wants it right now. So we can have some sudden impulse to go do something that we wouldn't really normally do. And this is definitely characteristic of Mars Uranus together is like this sudden action that almost like you find yourself doing without thinking. So almost like if you think of like, um, like emergency responders, when an accident happens, they just have to be able to go, 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 act, act, act. And there is no, no time to think about what to do. Now, I'm not saying this means there will be definitely an emergency, but we may have all have different situations in our life where we're calling on those kind of energies, those kind of archetypes or themes are showing up for us. This is sudden decisive action that has no time to consider the, the outcome. You know, there's no, it's like, there's no time to think about 
the potential risk. It's just, you've got to go right now. Now, again, this is going to show up differently for everyone, everyone who has it, right? We're all going to have this in a different place in our chart, making different aspects to our needle charts. But another way this could show up for some people is like you can have someone show up in your life who embodies Mars and Uranus, which would be, would be like someone who's very adventurous and who like uh, likes to drive really fast or, you know, action and adventure. We could see action and adventure movies being strong or like one particular like um Fast and the Furious kind of movie being released, even though I know that's probably not likely. I have not looked at what the movie schedule is, but like something in things in the media that have those kind of things, like people street racing or, um, you know, fast cars or people who eat swords or fire making the news for some reason or a big convention of that type or um, something like that. In the world, we could see more movements for progress. Again, you know, revolutions, people trying to start revolutions. I do have some notes I'm referring to here. Um, but you know, this is anything, but it could be possible again, that is regarding land homeowners rights or the people's rights when it comes to housing or when it comes to food, we could see some kind of movements with like requiring, um, ingredients to be labeled better on foods or something like that. We can also see new breakthroughs when it comes to transfer transportation. So we see this in history where there were a lot of things happening with railroads at this time and the um, you know the aspects of the past that I looked at now. Well, what's the new frontier now? The new frontier now isn't railroads, but it might be space. So there might be some kind of new development with, with the, the space race, whatever that is, whatever that applies to right now some kind of breakthrough or something that um, moves forward with that advancement with that advancement with the literal connotation of Mars, you know, so maybe something Elon Musk's doing moves forward. It's also possible that like something like that could malfunction with, with Uranus being sudden unexpected things and Mars being heat, right? So it's like a rocket gets too hot and explodes or something. This, this is a possibility. There's many, many possibilities with Mars conjunct Uranus. Explosions are a strong theme with this aspect. I'm not going to lie. I don't want that to happen, but it's possible we could see like an earthquake or a bomb go off or something, especially on that 1st of August. Because Mars rules heat, it's possible we could also see record heat waves happening on August 1st or like electrical fires or things where something like heats up so much that it shorts out, something like that could happen. Um, one possible, uh, this is like a prediction I'm going to throw out just for fun, you guys. So don't take this stuff too seriously. But one thing I think we could see happening around August 1st, 2022, is we could be forced to move our money online. This could be when we get the announcement that the government is no longer printing cash or something along those lines where we're taking a step forward toward that, um, you know, progress, Uranus ruling progress and whether, you know, whether people like that or agree with it, I don't love the idea. I don't love it. Um, but that is one possibility for everyone out there. There could be little short circuits happening. Um, another, you know, example of this would be like a freedom fighter, someone who's willing to fight for a cause. And this may be, you know, good or bad and probably uh, not so good, right? Freedom fighters usually aren't uh, on the good side, but we could see some kind of um, gesture of revolution that may or may not be good. Um, so I'm not saying like I want those kind of things to happen, but with Uranus Mars, I really can't avoid those kind of predictions. Um, there's just no way to, to, to make it seem better than it is. Uh, now, I did do some research on history, so I'm just going to tell you about some of the themes that were happening um, during the last Uranus North Node Mars conjunction, which was in May of 1855. So one of the things that was happening in the U.S., um, and the first thing that showed up here was uh, called the Treaty of Point Ellis in Washington State. Now, this forced Native Americans to relinquish their land. Okay, so we could see themes of that issue coming up in the world where um, Native Americans are now speaking up and saying, hey, we had to relinquish our land. Why don't we get our rights back? Or we could see that same theme coming up in some other countries or um, with other people involved of like, 
oh no, no, now these people who had this land before, they no longer get it. So we could see like maybe government seizures of certain lands or, or things like that. Or, or again, that theme of people taking land from other people, countries taking land from other countries uh, showing up. Another thing that was happening at the time of the last uh, Uranus North Node Mars conjunction was the Crimean War. So I'm just going to tell you guys a little bit about what was happening with that war. So this was from 1853 to 56, and it had to do with the Russians um, and Turkey and having problems with the European state system. Uh, long story short, it was about the balance of power. Lots of other countries and resources were involved. And at this time, I believe the U.S. was, uh, wait, let me see here. I have some notes on this. Uh, no, that was actually, yes. No. Ah, okay, so forget I said that. So basically, a war about resources. Uh, that is the long story short, I hate history. <laughs> so we're going to move on. But basically, we could see more spats, you know, more disagreements, um, on the political level, on the world stage about who has what, who is giving what to who. And, and resources and Russia both are, you know, between the U.S. and Russia, actually. Now, back in March of 1942, this was a, um, a similar conjunction, but it didn't have all three planets together. So um, still, we may see themes. And during 1942, that was World War II, when the U.S. had been repeatedly delivering goods to the Soviet Union. So basically, who gets what? Who's delivering what to who? What goods are being delivered? What goods are being withheld? This could all be a theme, which we already see this sort of happening, but there could be some kind of conflict that brings this to a boiling point or some kind of bigger development in the areas of resources and different countries making trade agreements and things like this. Um, so other things in history that may or may not be a big deal. Um, Literally, again, I said this already, but land could literally heat up with Mars and Taurus, right? Taurus ruling land, Mars being heat. So, I mean, how could this show up? This could possibly be like a volcano erupts or something somewhere. Uh, it could be like um, land underwater heats up and that causes a tsunami somewhere. Uh, it could just be hottest, you know, hottest world records in, in different places or other, other things that would happen as a result of land getting hot. Um, another thing that happened, this was more recent, February 2019, this would be the last Mars-Uranus conjunction, that was when the government shutdown happened, so it's possible we could see that again. Another little random tidbit that I came across was um, in February 2019, the Associated Press and Snopes said that they would no longer provide back fact-checking services for Facebook. And so the, the issue of fact-checking on Facebook could come up or of other social media platforms that use fact-checking and the whole um, controversy over whether that's ethical, who's fact-checking the fact-checkers, you know, whose agenda is this all anyway. Uh, so then another thing that happened was in there was a North American cold wave caused by a polar vortex. So even though, you know, I predicted heat wave, cold wave could also happen too. Um, another thing that happened in 2019 was a large scale natural gas shortage um, in the U.S. state of Michigan was averted following the compliance of an emergency request from consumer energy for state residents to lower thermostats. So issues with gas, issues with natural gas, issues with um, areas of the world needing to reduce emissions in some way in order to avert some kind of a crisis of heat crisis or something like that. Things like this could possibly show up. Now, these are just maybes. None of these are for sure. These are for fun or for free. Don't take them too seriously. We could see some kind of themes with Russia and weapons coming up. This is a really, really strong possibility with this um, configuration. That's all I'm going to say about the world. Uh, hopefully bombs don't go off. Hopefully, um, you know, we have some kind of good revolution that is positive and everyone is all good and happy. I really don't love these negative um, possibilities, but 
You know, our world has negative and positive in it. Therefore, I'm going to talk about negative and positive things. Okay, so now we are going to move on to the rising signs and we'll talk about how this transit may affect the different signs of the zodiac, starting with Aries. So for Aries and Aries rising, this is happening in your second house of money, property, and possessions. So for some Aries and Aries rising, you just might want to have more things at this time. You might want to really be motivated and focused to make sudden decisions that move your financial life or your life when it comes to what you own or what you have forward. Um, there can also be some angst and some, you know, some just feelings of uneasiness or a need to just suddenly change something. Maybe something changes that is not within your control when it comes to your financial life, your possessions, what you have and what you own. Because the North Node is here, this feels like it is more of a moving toward a goal kind of an energy. You know, something about moving your life forward, making decisions that really, you know, put you in more of a position that you want to be in, especially with Jupiter and Aries in your first house and that Mars being your the sign of your ruler, this being a, a strong transit for you guys. And then with Uranus ruling your 11th house, for some of you, this will have to do with your friends or your values, you know, and there may be some tension between what your friends want and what you want. You may suddenly cut off a friend, suddenly connect with a new group of friends, something like that may also be showing up since your 11th house ruler is involved and it's being, you know, stimulated by Mars. Um, and again, your first house ruler is stimulated by Uranus. So lots of stimulation, lots of activity in the areas of life, of friendships, the professional associations you belong with, to um, um, groups that you're on, on social media or online, astrology, if that's a strong theme in your life, or you know science, math, and technology, if that's a strong theme in your life. So you have to take what resonates here and leave the rest. So that's what I've got for Aries and Aries rising. For Taurus and Taurus rising... This is happening in your first house of identity, the body, the self. You can make a sudden change to your appearance. You could have a sudden change to your appearance that you're not initiating. Um, since Mars rules your 12th house of isolation, maybe something is happening related to how much time you spend by yourself. Maybe you get more downtime. Maybe you suddenly take a vacation. Some of you may, um, you know, that stimulation is coming from your 10th house ruler. So there may be something in your job that changes that forces you to have to change your appearance, change where you live, change your body, or you may, um, have the other, the other way around where like a change to your body or your appearance or a new workout routine or something like that somehow affects your 10th house, your career, or how you're seen in the public eye or something along those lines. So it's all about sudden changes in your life. You know, these are more, this is a more, um, prominent transit for Taurus and Taurus rising because it it's falling in your first house. Um, and even, you know, with Uranus being that 10th house ruler, that also makes it a, a stronger theme for you guys here. So let me know at Taurus and Taurus Rising if that resonates. And moving on now to Gemini. For Gemini and Gemini Rising, this is in your 12th house of, you know, the things we don't see, self-sabotage, our subconscious, our privacy, our um, imagination, you know, the things we visualize, that's all the 12th house. So for you guys, there might be some stimulation of some ideas that uh, you didn't have before. You could have, like, remember some dreams you didn't remember you could be more connected to helping people, right? Because the 12th house is very much a house of being connected to the collective needs. So um, Geminis and Gemini risings may be, be more sensitive at this time to um, the needs of the collective. You might feel like your heart is just open to the cries of like the unheard people of the world. Um, also, you know, that ninth house is ruling, uh, Uranus is ruling your ninth house and Mars ruling your 11th. Um, that really puts it into this... Um, Something going on with, you know, perhaps taking time out to follow some kind of spiritual discipline, learn more about the meaning of life or things that give your life meaning and possibly doing that in groups. Gemini's and Gemini Risings might be like, I want to take a retreat right now. I want to go um, do something in a group that's going to improve my um 
worldview. Uh, and there also may be challenges to this with Saturn there. There may be challenges to um, expanding your mind or, or really understanding more about the faith that you're most drawn to. And uh, that's, I mean, that's really what I see here. But it, it does feel like there's some kind of sudden change that maybe you yourself don't know why you're even doing. There's just a feeling that you need to change something. Another thing that can come up during 12th house transits is fears that don't we don't understand. Um, so this would be a good time if you are making impulsive changes or sudden changes to especially your spiritual life, your private life, your, your faith, um, to really kind of ask yourself, make sure you're not driven by some subconscious fear going on with those energies at play. Um, you know, and also, and the last thing for um, Gemini's and Gemini risings, Mars and Uranus here with the North Node in your 11th house, from, sorry, with Mars being the ruler of your 11th house, there can be a connection here to friends or the groups that you belong to, where like they're like stimulating you to make a change that you don't even know why you're doing it kind of a thing. Um, and so... I would say be careful for Gemini's and Gemini risings for like the crowd mentality. I think of like, I think of like going to a riot, actually. I'm not saying all of you are going to riots, but if you're planning on doing some group activity like a concert or something, really be, be mindful that you don't get like sucked into the crowd mentality and end up doing something you wouldn't normally do. So moving on now to the next sign, which is Cancer, Cancer Rising. You guys have this happening in your 11th house of groups, friends, um, hopes and dreams. So you might be stimulated to like once and for all go after a dream you've wanted. Uh, that can be one way this shows up for Cancers and Cancer Risings. You could also find that you are more huh, connected to like maybe you start on a path of action towards securing land or towards like having the kind of friends you want. And, and that could be more of a long-term path, but it's like maybe something initiates that. You could have some challenge happen that affects your work life and your um, how you show up in groups. Definitely something affecting your public life here with your 10th ruler in the 11th with the ruler of your 8th house of intimacy. So it's almost like, you know, something can be, uh, it's almost like there can be a challenge here between like what your friends want or what your partner wants. If you don't have a partner, what your friends are doing or want to be doing or what you wish you were doing with people versus, you know, what you need to transform. There might be some kind of challenge here. There can also be something happening with the, um, with your work life, your role in, in your job changing slightly, um, for some people, maybe becoming more public. For others, less public. Um, definitely, there's something happening for Cancer Risings at this time, dealing with your public and private life and sudden changes that may be totally unexpected. So now moving on to the sign of Leo. Leo and Leo Risings. This is happening in your 10th house of career with your 9th ruler and your 7th ruler. So, you know, this really does feel like a sudden change to your role in your job. You could you could have more work. You could have something open up. You could have, if you do work on social media, you could have your social media pop off. Uh, you could have someone call you out of the blue like an old boss or someone and offer you more work and you go after it, you could be the one calling someone else. Um, having it be connected to your, you know, that seventh house ruler, it's almost like for some of you, maybe a change in your relationship allows you to um, take on a different role in your work or in your job. Maybe you're out of a relationship, you don't have to work for that person anymore. Something with work and, and you know, um, career. Uh, you could also have, uh, with that ninth house ruler in the 10th, um, you could find meaningful work at this time or some kind of change that really is connected to the theme of work that gives your life meaning. Maybe you learn what that is. Maybe you find something new that really helps with that. You know, uh, other potential possibilities connecting these two areas of life. A lot of possibilities here, but but uh, doing something that, that a monk would do for your job or like finding some expansion or some changes happening that, that cause you to bring more meaning into the work that you have. That's probably what's highlighted here, but with Mars and, and Uranus being the catalyst, it, it might be uncomfortable. It might be sudden. You might not know what to do, you know, something like that, where some kind of change in your work or your role or a conflict at work leaves you going shocked a little bit. So this can be shocking. It can be stimulating. It can bring you, um, money 
money maybe, or just more responsibility and more like activity in your public sector. Moving on now to Virgos and Virgo risings. You guys have this happening in your ninth house of the meaning of life. So for some people, this will be something like suddenly realizing, like having an epiphany, having a spiritual awakening, having something move forward when it comes to your belief system and your faith, especially if you've been working toward some kind of spiritual outcome, you know, some kind of spiritual goal. Uranus might move you forward on this goal faster. Mars um, ruling your eighth house of um, intimacy could be like a partner comes along and, and you meet and, and it's like um, you maybe you meet someone at work or something and bam, now, now life suddenly has meaning. <laughs> That's like one way this could show up. Not every Virgo and Virgo rising is going to have that. But for some, there is a deeper intimacy that maybe is sudden. And it might be shocking. It might be jarring. Something might happen that opens you up more. And, and this could be pleasant or it could be challenging just depending on which Virgo rising you are and how it's aspecting your natal planets, but it's unexpected and it affects how you feel about your life direction and what gives your life meaning. It also may affect your house of intimacy. So it could be something that like you become more intimate with someone. You could have a powerful um, ex near death experience. Okay. Some Virgos and Virgo risings that that may be what happens here. Um, and you know, that sixth house being involved, this could be a sudden change related to how much you're working every day. So it's almost like, you know, something in that ninth house of belief systems or understanding some new level of understanding or shocking event that sh shakes up the way you see the world, you know, makes you want to work less hours or more hours or, um, you know, something changes suddenly with, um, an intimate relationship, you know, it's almost like you get pregnant, then you want to work less, you know, not every Virgo or Virgo rising are going to get pregnant, but this is an example of something where something related to a deeper level of intimacy causes a sudden change to your work schedule or what you do on a regular day-to-day -day basis. Um, so that is what I have for Virgo and Virgo rising changes to intimacy, you know, deepening intimacy changes to belief systems, the meaning of life, going deeper into a certain, um, spiritual set of spiritual principles, right? Some, for some, this might be teaching or the law or publishing, just depending on which Virgo or Virgo rising you are watching this. So let me know in a comment below you guys, if that resonates, I love hearing from you and moving on now to Libra and Libra rising. This is happening in your eighth house of intimacy, transformation, other people's money. And you know, you've got your seventh house ruler and your fifth house ruler here. Definitely for Libras and Libra risings, this is a relationship transit. You could definitely have a sudden change to your intimacy. Now this, this could be a relationship change one way or the other, or the change of a cycle in a relationship. Um, especially when it comes to going deeper with the person, you know, going into a deeper level of intimacy with the person, some sudden change that makes you closer to the person, uh, something unexpected in the bedroom, something unexpected with your partner's finances. If you are coupled, if you are not coupled, something unexpected with taxes, with money you owe, with money owed to you that changes, that, um, changes a lot of things for you. Um, and, and you know, because it's on that second, eighth house axis, it can also affect your money. This could be a money transit, although it's not clear whether this is you getting or giving money because it's just, you know, it's more to do with your ability to have fun, your joy, your dating life, your romance, your children, um, your, any entanglements with people, entanglements with people involving money. This can all come up at this time and that Uranus is, is definitely going to shock Uranus and Mars together are going to stimulate that eighth house. So, you know, if you've had debt, you haven't been able to pay off. Maybe this is now when you start paying. If you have, again, been owed money in some way, maybe this is when that those payments start to come in possibly. I don't want to say that as a guarantee, but these are just potentials of things that could happen. Again, it can be like, now your partner is out of work, change to your partner's money, things like that. Or you meet someone and, and they have money and now you can move in together. You know, It can be something like that, um, but I, I do see it definitely being mostly things with other people involved in this transit for Libra and Libra rising. So let me know if that resonates. I love hearing from you guys. Moving on now to Scorpio and Scorpio risings. This is happening in your seventh house of relationships. 
and your sixth house ruler and your fourth house ruler are getting together here. So, you know, that sixth house is going to be the things we do every day, our routine. The fourth house is home. So something could happen, some kind of change in a relationship, whether it be a significant other or a close friend could change something also related to your routine, your daily life and your home situation. So this could be something like moving in with a friend, moving in with a lover, moving out of a lover's house, you know, getting a, having a breakup, moving out, um, or uh, same thing with a friend where This could also be with a friend where you are like you you have been roommates with someone and they leave or something something changes and you are no longer roommates with that person. Uh, it could be other things like this, but we're talking about. Oh, another thing is this could be a change to your something with your family of origin for Scorpios and Scorpio risings. And because it deals with, you know, Mars, a ruler of Scorpio uh, as well, this is probably a stronger transit for you guys. So something could change with your hometown, your, your mom and dad, a grandma, grandpa, you know, someone in your family line that causes some kind of change or disruption to your daily routine, something like that. You know, where you got to go take care of grandma or, or meet up with a family and that, you know, causes a, again, a disruption to routine. That's one way this could look as well. Now, this could also be like someone has a baby or someone that gets married too. So something like that could be happening, but it does feel um, like it would be a really significant one for, for Scorpios and Scorpio risings. Moving on now to Sag, Sag and Sag Risings. This is going to be in your sixth house of daily work, your schedule, your health, your routines. So something could happen that can just really stimulate your routine. This could be as simple as taking on another job, having more work to do. Oftentimes, sixth house transits mean you're busier. It doesn't always mean you're getting the money though. So it, you know, it's like the times when you're busier, you just have more to do. You got to move and work and you know, it's not something you're going to get paid more for. It's just stuff you got to take care of. So, um, Sag and Sag rising can be having more to do, you know, just more to do. There can be sudden changes to your health, to your routine, to your diet. You might be the initiator of these changes. You might be suddenly eating more. You might be suddenly eating out more. You might be suddenly dialing it back in and eating out less. Uh, Mars is ruling your fifth house and Uranus ruling your third house. So fifth house, third house, and sixth house to me, you know, does feel like a transit where, where you will be very, very busy, but that fifth house brings in something good. It's either going to bring in more pleasure or more sex or more dating or more, um, you know, I almost get the, um, the image of like you're dating someone across town and now you got to go visit them all the time. And that takes more time out of your routine kind of a thing. Uh, you know, something like that or more entertainment with the fifth house. It can also be more self-expression, but with that, um, third house ruler there in that sixth house to me, if this is a transit that's bringing more self-expression, I get the feeling Sages and Sag risings may not be totally secure about this. If that is how this shows up for you, there's probably some insecurity with Uranus being that third house ruler here. And, um, you know, like wondering, am I doing the right thing all the time? There might be something around that for some of you where it's like, am I doing the right thing? Am I taking the right actions every day? Uh, that could be something that happens. Or again, you know, that Mars and Uranus, it's just like something demands your attention when it comes to what you're doing every day. And you can't like, you can't avoid it. Um, Mars being heat, you know, uh, in the sixth house, it's things speed up, man. Things speed up. I can't get around that, that interpretation. Now for some, this will be like, you are speeding it up. You are working out more every day. You are generating more heat in your body on purpose. For others, it may be more of like a response to an external stimulus that you just got to get more done. You got to get it done. Got to get it done. That is all I can tap into for Sag and Sag Rising. So that is what I have for you guys. And let me know in a comment below if it's accurate. Capricorn and Capricorn Risings. This is happening in your fifth house of fun, children, um, dating, romance, and entertainment, uh, pleasure. So 
Uranus Mars here can definitely stimulate pleasure for you guys. So I, that's a great thing, you know, where you may be more inspired or motivated to go out and do things that are fun. Uh, there may also be something un, that you need to address with a child that's a sudden change that you have to deal with. Um, this could range for many things for people. Uh, some it will be more positive, some it will not. Um, and then, you know, for... Mars being the ruler of your fourth house and Uranus ruling your second house of money, this could be like needing to make a sudden investment in something, you know, needing to suddenly invest in your home, suddenly spending some money on your house, getting a new house, um, upgrading or somehow putting more energy into enjoying your home. Um, for others, something may change with your family of origin and this somehow affects your your, the amount of time you spend going out. Um, for many, it will be your, your freed up from something. Maybe you're freed up from some kind of responsibility to your family um, or freed up from some kind of financial responsibility that now you can breathe a little and now you can do a little bit more. For some Capricorns, that is what I'm feeling actually probably the strongest. That's the strongest one, but there's more than one of you watching this. So just take whatever resonates and leave the rest. Uh, Mars, Uranus in the fifth may make you just be the one who's like, I want to be more free. I want to express myself more fully. I want to be more honest in my relationships. I want to go out and go to sh shows or, you know, enjoy the life of entertainment, whatever it is that you like to do for fun. You may just be doing more things for fun. The, the theme of entertainment, of children, of um, going out to like live shows or music or whatever you do, that is all um, possible here. You know, you could just have a time of life where it's stimulating. You want to go do more stuff. Uh, so I, I see this as, you know, because this is in your fifth house, it's a mostly positive transit for Capricorn, but it can also be a time where for some, you know, you might actually be changing the other way where um, you're busier now, your fun is busier now. The things that were leisure are now like more filled with activity and that may be good or it may be a kind of a challenge just depending on how that shows up. Moving on now to Aquarius and Aquarius rising. You guys, this is happening in your fourth house of home. So for Aquarius and Aquarius rising, this is, you know, a transit where you might want to make sudden changes to your home. You might want to move. You might need to move. You might need to fix something in the house. There might be a sudden change to your roommate situation, or it might just be when your lease is up. Some of you will suddenly want to get the hell out of the house you're in, and you'll want to be able to do it now. You may not be. Um, others, you know, this might be a more life-changing kind of a thing because Uranus rules your first house. So having Mars, you know, stimulate that. Mars, your third house ruler, third house being the mind, third house being communication. You might want to change how you communicate uh, so that you feel more comfortable within yourself. So there may be something affecting like a need for more communication. You might have to be talking to more people. Um, for some, this will deal with real estate because it is in that fourth house and that is one of the significations, but that won't be the case for everyone. So that is what I have for Aquarius and Aquarius rise and some kind of sudden unexpected change in your home to your home or to your how much you're communicating on a regular basis. Moving on now to Pisces, last but not least, you guys have this in your third house of uh, the mind, communication. Uh, so you could just be busier. Sometimes third house transits make us busier, um, especially things we have to think about and plan and stuff like that. Since Uranus is ruling your 12th house, and Aquarius, or sorry, and Mars is ruling your second house, this is gonna be probably a transit that deals with money or the need to make money, something about how you communicate to make money and your whole subconscious mind might be thrown in there just a little bit. Uh, it could deal with spirituality, you know, how you speak to the divine, how you say your prayers. Um, that could be part of it. Some Pisces and Pisces rising will just want to pray more at this point or want to speak to the universe more or want to have more conversations with their own subconscious mind and, and seek out tools like hypnotherapy or something. Other Pisces and Pisces rising will have a sudden change to that third house area of like th the errands you run every day or every week. Um, and so something can change with that where like now you're, I don't know, ordering your groceries online more 
or now you don't have the money to do that. So now you are, because it is a money transit, it can be a sudden change to how much you're pulling in. Uh, and this could be positive or negative, just depending on which Pisces you are getting this, watching this. Um, but either way, you know, that, that financial change is probably going to end up with more or less short trips in some way, or more or less communication in some way. So that is what I have for Pisces and Pisces Rising. Let me know in a comment below if that resonated. I love hearing from you. And you guys, comment below what you got out of this video. I always love hearing from you. And if you haven't heard, we are doing live readings now on Fridays and Sundays. So you can join us at 6.30 p.m. on Fridays or at 11 a.m. Pacific time on Sundays so that those of you who are like over in um, the UK who want to do it can still join us. So we haven't gotten in on that, check it out. You can hit notify me. You can actually go to the page, hit notify me right now so that you get notified for the next live so you can join us. So there are tons of fun. I'd love to see you there and I will see you all in the next video.